So I've lived in Florida for around eight-ish years now, and I love everything to do with space travel. I think it's really amazing what different companies like SpaceX and NASA are doing these days, but I've never actually seen a rocket launch. Even though in my state, we have a literal spaceport, and that, that's such a cool thing to say. Spaceport. Anyways, a few days ago, I noticed there was a SpaceX launch coming up, and I've never actually done a road trip or anything with my Tesla yet. So I thought, you know what would be a really cool idea? To take a Tesla on a road trip to watch a SpaceX launch. And here we are. How do you do, everyone? Hope you're having a great day today. My name is Frank, and I am a medical school applicant at the moment, love all things personal finance, and kind of have a thing for Star Wars. So this trip was very very enjoyable for me this is also my first time doing like the whole time lapse thing and i may do so again in the future let me know in the comments below if you liked it didn't like it or just show your support by smashing that like button for the youtube algorithm i feel this is a really cool way to document the entire trip but if you guys are just here to watch the rocket launch i'm gonna leave some timestamps in the description below and it should be near the end of this video but if you want to stick around and find out a very cool airbnb that you can stay at if you go watch a rocket launch want some tips and tricks that I wish I knew before going to watch a launch myself, or are just curious about how much this entire trip cost me, I do recommend sticking around and just watching the whole thing through. With that said, we're gonna start our trip at a Tesla charging station inside of a Wawa. Alright, so I cut the clip right there. I want to keep the location private to be respectful to the very nice owners of this place. But here's some pictures of the inside of the cabin from my Instagram. By the way, follow me if you haven't already at FM Simon. And this cabin really made the trip feel that much more special, almost like a two in one, because we went there to see a rocket launch. But at the same time, we ended up staying somewhere very unique that was like in the woods almost. At least at least that's how it felt. And I've never been anywhere like that before. And it was it was quite nice. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description below for that particular Airbnb. And here's a very nice drone shot of the entire place so you can see how awesome it is.
Now, for the visit, if you're gonna go watch a launch and you don't have like reserved seating for that particular launch, you can still watch it. You just have to get a general admission ticket. The thing is, make sure to get there very early. Like the parking lot opens at around 9.30 a.m. and we got there at 8.40 a.m. and there were already people in line. So yeah, get there early. The other thing is there's three main viewing areas for the launch. There's the main visitor center area where everyone can go and everyone has admission to. That's also where most of the attractions are. Then there's like the reserved Banana Creek area, which you need a reserved seating ticket for, and those sell out like a week in advance. So keep that in mind. And finally, there's the Apollo slash Saturn V like lawn viewing area. And that one is first come first serve. So like I said, get there very early. Also, another thing about the Apollo slash Saturn V viewing area is that it's not actually located in like the main visitor complex. You have to take a bus from the visitor complex to go to the Apollo slash Saturn V viewing area. And the thing is right now due to COVID restrictions, every one of those buses you need a reservation for and you can only make a reservation the day of and you have to be like in the visitor center to make the reservation. So my suggestion to do to you is to get there super, super early and immediately go up to the gate. There's gonna be like signs with a QR code to make a bus reservation and make sure to make a bus reservation as soon as possible. When we were there, a bunch of people waited to get like inside uh, to the bus station to try to make a reservation there at the kiosks. And by then they were sold out. Honestly, they, they sold out in like 30 minutes like that. And multiple people just were not able to see the launch from that Apollo slash Saturn V viewing area just because they didn't have a bus reservation, even though they got there very early. Anyways, this is what the bus loading area looks like. They take a nice little picture of you that you can buy later, and then you get on the bus, watch like an informational video, and it'll take you to the viewing area. Once you get off the bus, you go through a nice little walking area, and that leads to the Apollo slash Saturn V building, which is actually quite big. If you go right from here, sort of like towards the right, that will go to the bleacher seating for the rocket launch viewing area, but let's take a look inside. Once inside, we see why the building is so massive, and that's because it has a Saturn V rocket inside of it. This thing is massive, guys. It is the largest rocket ever built and is what was used to send astronauts to the moon. There's also a nice little gift shop here, though the one in the main visitor center is significantly bigger, but you can still do some shopping here. In addition, there's a nice little food court all the way at the end of this building where you can have a few snacks as you're waiting to watch the rocket launch which you can just walk out right through here, and this is the launch area. Like I said, the bleacher seating is first come, first serve, so make sure to get here very early. This is what it looks like in the morning, like hours away from the launch, but as you will see in a second, it gets packed very easily. Don't worry though, there's space for everyone as long as you have a reservation for the bus. And as you can see, it does get very packed, especially the bleacher seating, but if you just wanna stand and watch the rocket launch, there's space for everyone. There's a huge lawn off to the left side here. Weather continuing to trend favorably. Like one minute. Transitions into its uh, central Keep your fingers state. crossed on the weather. Fingers crossed on the weather. Come on. T-minus one minute. One minute. So, start to watch it now. Ignore the screen for the moment. Okay. Now, a little PSA, everyone. If you're going to watch a launch and you get there very early and you're sitting on the bleachers, make sure to bring something to eat Make sure to drink lots of water, bring sunscreen, and maybe even try to bring an umbrella to like shade yourself from the sun. This is Florida. It is the sunshine state for a reason. It gets very, very hot. Uh, a girl like quite close to me in her 20s passed out from the heat and a few of us had to help her out until the paramedics came. Thankfully, she turned out to be okay, but you want this to be a very good experience. So do keep this in mind, especially if you get there very early and are sitting in the sun for hours waiting for the launch to happen. You want this to be a good experience. Now on that same topic of having a very good experience out of this day, you're gonna see a lot of people like filming the launch with some sort of device. And if you do decide to do this, I strongly recommend you do it like I did. So you set up your camera in like the general direction of where the launch is gonna happen and you make sure to watch it with your own eyes. This is one of those things that in my opinion is a very emotional experience, especially after you realize just the amount of hours of work and generations that it took for humanity to get to the point where they can just launch a rocket up into the air. And you don't wanna watch that from like the lens of a camera. 
you want to really see it with your own eyes. But that's enough of my sappy talk, guys. Here's the launch. That was pretty cool right but how much did it cost me i drove from miami to cape canaveral which is basically like from miami to orlando and then we stayed at the airbnb had a bunch of food and i bought the spacex hat so in total i have like a list here on my computer uh so charging the tesla to have enough charge to make the whole trip and back was free for me because i have a bunch of free supercharger miles left on my tesla account but if it wasn't free, it would have cost me $26 to drive up and then drive back down. The Airbnb was $150 a night, so plus $150. And I think it was really worth it just because we were three people. I didn't want to stay in like a very small hotel room with like maximum of like two beds. And I don't know, I just wanted space, right? And also it was a very very unique experience. Would strongly recommend staying there. It was an amazing place to be in and it really added to the trip. So that was worth it. The tickets for Kennedy Space Center were $64 with taxes and fees plus another $10 for parking. Then on my end, I paid $94 for food in total, but that also includes me paying food for the other people on this trip, but they also paid for some of my food, so take that as you will. Um, I bought three umbrellas. Uh, just because I didn't have umbrellas and on and they they came in necessary because it started to rain and they were super useful for the sun But that was forty five dollars down the drain for me this hat was fifty one dollars and seventy six cents and Honestly, I don't think it was worth it, but I got caught up in like the hype of oh SpaceX launch I love space etc. And yeah, I'm not perfect But yeah, now I have a SpaceX hat that was like fifty dollars, which is nice that makes for a total of $412. Could it have been cheaper? Yeah, it could have been cheaper probably, but I had a really fun time and I think that's all that counts. Anyways, that's it for me guys. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. If you like this content, make sure to click that like button and subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, so we don't have any battery, and if anyone's curious how you actually charge the Tesla, you just click the little lightning port, and then when you go here to the supercharger, just take this little thing out. You stick it in the car, and that's it. Uh, it actually connects to the credit card that's linked to the Tesla profile, so there's no swiping or anything on here, and you just leave your car there to charge, and that's it.